You are listening to Kelly and Laura, just two unfiltered mums here to share the more reality of parenthood. So on today's episode, we welcome Jenna, the founder and owner of Cloud and Cuckoo. Welcome, Jenna. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. This is brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on our podcast. So Thank you do you want to start with a little bit about telling the listeners about your family setup? Yes, yeah, so I am a mother to Elfie and Flo. Elfie is now 10 and Flo is six. Um, and I, with my husband, Dan, um, and I started Cloud and Cuckoo. I had the idea for one of our products when my eldest daughter was around three months old. So that's when I initially had the idea. Um, for the business and now I am the founder and owner of Cloud and Cuckoo. Amazing. Uh, amazing. So I actually met Jenna through um, Instagram and it's actually when a friend um, gave me one of your gift sets as a present when George was born. Um, and then obviously I followed you on Instagram and we got talking on there and obviously following all your products and launches and stuff which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so we're really, really excited to get you on. So when did you set up Cloud and Cooker? And why did you decide to set up your own business? So, yeah, so I, I mean, I was, I, I mean, I, I'm that sort of person who always has a new idea to the point where I probably annoy quite <laughs> most of my friends and family <laughs> with a new idea. And I, I'd had <laughs> ideas for other businesses actually before this one. Um, but I think I, so I was with my, I was a, mom, a new mom. My eldest daughter was three months old. She was teething, or she was chewing on her hands a lot, putting everything in her mouth. Um, and I, I remember she, I was sat with her. Oh, somebody had told me about. I'd, I'd gone sort of try and find something for her to chew on, and everything in the shops was made from plastic, which I just couldn't believe. A mm. friend had told me about another rubber teething toy, probably a, quite a famous one, a certain giraffe, which I had got, which she did love, but she just couldn't hold it herself. So I used to sit there holding it to her mouth for it to chew on you know as a new mum I'd not had a shower it was a mess and I just wanted her to be able to hold it herself I just thought this is crazy so I was I mean I, I looked everywhere online I even looked for pet toys oh wow <laughs> I never would have thought of that actually I just wanted a rubber <laughs> ring that she could hold herself and I just kept thinking why why isn't there something you know that like that already mm. and then I saw a few of my other mum friends doing the same thing with with the giraffe holding it towards their mouth and I just thought it needs to be a, a character based on a ring and so essentially I mean I was a teacher at the time um, an art and design teacher so design is my thing and I was already sort of sketching out the right sort of shape that would have been more suitable for her to hold um, and that's where the, the my, I first had the idea for my first product. Amazing I think that is one of the things I love about the product is the fact that they can hold them themselves. I mean, um, Isla got her first tooth at five months and George at four months and so, they could hold them at that age. It was brilliant. And that's, I, th it's what I, th I sort of didn't realise that at the time as well. I mean, I was an art teacher, so having children come in terms of their ability to draw, that's really varied. So... Mm. When I, I didn't realize one of the benefits of our teething toys would be that if they can hold it really easily, if they start using it from a, a young age, they're developing their fine motor skills from a mm. really young age, which means that they can then hold things earlier. So even in terms of when it comes to writing or drawing, they can hold a pencil better. So if, or if it comes to weaning, they can already hold the food. So they're, mm. they're or a spoon, they're less frustrated then. And again, that means it's easier for the parent because they, they're more independent because they can control their fine motor skills. So that was a benefit that I, at the time, I didn't real you know realize would be what, uh, what another benefit of the toy so yeah that's, that's a so huge good. thing the fact that they can hold it themselves I think as well like Mila was never bothered about I bought various teethers and you're right and on reflection now they were all plastic or silicone or something like that and um she I would have to hold it in her mouth I'm just like reflecting now thinking <laughs> yeah. she was good god You'd write, just, you're like, you're in your pyjamas, you want to shower, you just want those five minutes by yourself, you know, and you just can't. That is, that is what it's about. So even though it's a teething toy for a baby, it's designed to help parents have, it, you know, it entertains them, it settles them, it soothes them. Mm. What more, you know, do you really want from, from a toy? And so... Uh, yes the, there are other ones so like silicon for example that I tried even there was a rubber one that was solid that's not as pleasurable as 
something that's soft and squidgy. And there's quite a bit of research now that by biting down, it helps to regulate the nervous system. Ooh. So that relaxes them. So why we bite on pen lids as adults or, so, you know, ah. um, with children with anxiety might uh, bite their nails or even eating we do that to regulate our nervous system because we're trying to release that tension through the jaw so just by biting on something that's pleasurable that feeds back it really helps them just sort of feel calmer yeah it's so been it's been an absolute godsend with isla because with obviously i didn't have this with george but i've had to keep doing nursery runs and sort of he's at preschool now and if she's particularly grizzly it just means i can give it to her in the car and yeah it's not one of those where, you know, as soon as you get into the driver's seat, she's, it's going to have dropped and she's not going to be able to pick it up. Like she's just there. I can just see her in the mirror, just like, just chomping yeah. away for mo- most of the journey. It's brilliant. It's so good. And, I mean, that is what, me- that that makes that makes it all worth it for me. You know, I have quite a lot of messages from parents that say that sort of thing, like, oh, it's just given me, you know, five minutes just to sit down. And that is what makes my day because that's it's so hard you know when you're a parent Mm. there's so there's so many times when your baby needs you and you know if there's something that will just entertain them and settle them make them feel you know a bit of comfort that's that's just brilliant that that parents are getting that benefit from it that's brilliant really good what about um when you started your business obviously like, okay, starting a business and having kids, young kids. I mean, how how did you manage that? How was that? I, I mean, I have to say it all sort of happened. It just happened. And I, I, I think another part of my personality is I'm quite stubborn in that once I've got an idea and I'm, because I had other ideas for other businesses that I sort of knew wouldn't work. I knew this one, especially because my, my other uh, parents who are friends had the same problem. And as time went on, you know, I just really wanted that, that toy that I designed for my baby um, but it was really hard you know I, I certainly when I was as well I was on maternity leave for for part of that but then also I'd gone back to work um, I was still de- trying to develop the product still trying to find a manufacturer I'd paid a manufacturer to find I'd paid someone to find a manufacturer and they said no we can't find anybody really? <laughs> so, oh, wow. I mean at that point I could have I mean I thought about giving up but I just thought now I'm going to find one myself and because oh, it's rubber, it's, it's well that's it I just wasn't going to take no for an answer because rubber toys are a thing right so there's got to be somewhere but the the problem was you can't make it in the UK so the manufacturer my manufacturer is in Sri Lanka so it is hard to find a manufacturer because I can't fly (laughs) to other countries to find (laughs) someone so it was it was difficult but you know and especially whilst I was teaching at the same time so I had I first had the idea when Elfie was three months um and then I went back to work um I tried to get it licensed that didn't work I spent money trying to do that and that didn't work again I could have given up at that point but like I said I'm quite stubborn so I just knew I knew it was a product that I wanted and when I had my second child is when I launched and at that stage I still needed this product you know and I felt that other parents did too so um that's, yeah. that's just making me feel awful because I think that's so impressive and there's me like three months in still in my pajamas you know probably worn all week <laughs> Did we not just podcast, mate? You know, I mean, we did. not just did. that. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're doing I'm just a trying podcast. to make ourselves you... feel better. <laughs> yeah, I, and to be fair, you know, it was it was really hard. It put a lot of strain on family life for us, you know. And I wasn't particularly happy teaching, um, and so. I also wanted even though I know you, you're also a teacher Laura, but they sort of say about that that it's it's good for having kids but I found it really difficult especially I was an art teacher there's not many of us I had to write all the schemes of work through the summer holidays I had to work late at night and um, it wasn't a job that I felt enabled me to have much time with my family mm. and so I really wanted more flexibility and you know there's running my own business was a a way that could do that but in the early days it was still really really hard it's still really hard now you know so um I do sometimes think you know (laughs) would I do it again and I love it and I I love designing new products but it is really hard and it did take its toll um in the beginning and and certainly after I had flow when we launched because then I had two children um, was still trying to go back to work and yeah I was up to I mean it, I mean also COVID I, that was really did, tricky because mm. I was homeschooling the kids in the day the business had really took off I was doing all orders all the way till one o'clock at night and then waking up and trying to homeschool the kids again and I I, I think that pushed me to my absolute <laughs> limits yeah absolutely well I was going to ask just touch on the fact obviously you said that you were a teacher and obviously 
well, we know everything that's in the press at the moment as well in terms of mm. work-life balance with teaching. Um, but in terms of sort of the fact that there are there is a guarantee of school holidays, which obviously with your yeah. children getting to the school age, you knew that you wouldn't necessarily be at work um, yeah. when they're off. But also it's a salaried job, obviously the pension, like it's quite a secure job and you then left that to then set mm. up your own business and obviously that is a huge risk especially yeah. post covid so how did you manage that with your family life like that risk of just you know going for it anyway it was a risk and it was a risk that actually backfired because of covid so yeah, the business was going really well i was making you know money so i felt like i could leave teaching mm-hmm. but then because of covid um that was great for the first year but because I was just doing fulfillment I wasn't growing the business at all that then had an impact later on and so sales really dropped and so then I was really worried because I didn't have a steady income and we had to pay the mortgage and Mm -hmm. you know one of the things that I think was happening before was parents were telling other parents about it so you know in Covid that all stopped so there wasn't this sort of passing on um and so it, it all after that sort of time it felt like I'd lost all the momentum that I'd build up and I was starting from scratch again and I have I mean not that long ago was offered uh three days back at teaching again and obviously really? because uh, yeah and it's it's a it's a secure <laughs> income which you know mm. it, even now even with the business being more successful it's still not a secure income it's very up and down mm-hmm. um and so there's always sort of things that are happening and hopefully will mean that I've got more of a regular income but it but it but there's always then you have to put so much money back into the business Mm -hmm. um that it's really hard to make in terms of profit you know what I was earning as a teacher is that's still hard I'm still not making the same as what I would have if I'd carried on um teaching but I am happier yeah I'm definitely happier doing what I do and I just need to bring home the same money that I was earning before Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing and I think the fact that you've just sort of summed it up in a nutshell there you're happier so actually yes it was a massive risk but it's paid off maybe not necessarily income wise but for you for your mental health you know generally for your family it's made you happier so you know that's that's really really good yeah I went into school the school that I worked at invited me back to do diversity day where they sort of learn about the business and they um design their own teething toy like chew toy fidget toy oh, for wow. an older child which is yeah and so I went back to the school where I used to work and it was great and, and I was doing something really fun with them so that was lovely but it did make me think I'm so glad that I'm doing what I'm doing now and I don't and that I didn't take the offer of going back and doing three days there's no way I could have done that and run the business I did it for a, a while but now the business is takes so much more I do I have to do a lot there's no way I could do just on two days and you know the kids and everything else so yeah even though there's risk yeah. there though I bet it's like so exciting to think you know there's there's no limit really you know this is yours this is your baby this is your project you can take it in whatever way you want direction and you know this is really even though it's done so well over the years it's only the beginning and still it's still so much probably you know, so much further to go, which is so exciting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Compared to it a, is exciting. Your and, I mean, I had um, exactly, and I had an offer. Well, it's I've got a distribution deal that's going through at the moment, and initially, or even now, I I get my teething toys from the manufacturer, but I pack them myself, <laughs> so, and I fulfil the orders myself. Um, I've recently set up with my manufacturer for them to fulfil the order because I've got a distribution deal with somebody in Vietnam, which is huge numbers, and so they will ship from Sri Lanka to Vietnam and I won't be packing them and that feels like so much uh, easier in terms wow, of making money yeah. at the moment it's it's hard work you have to do so much marketing SEO you know that it's endless social media in itself as I'm sure you know mm. is a job <laughs> you could do all week and still probably wouldn't be doing enough so um yeah to have uh, an, an income stream where it'll be more passive where I'm not doing as much work would be amazing so I'm hoping that that's going to go through but I guess that feels like a huge step forward as well, like that distribution deal. Like, mm. you know, not only is your business going in the right direction, but wow, what a what a leap from you packing it to not only being it sold, you know, distributed in another country, but you're not having to do any of that side of it. Like that's massive progress. 
Yeah, I, I mean, that was that's the difference. That's the shift. So I've known for ages that I've got a good product, but I didn't have a good business. You know, to have a good business, it's you've got to have your marketing right. You've got to mm-hmm. be selling a huge number of products. Um, so it's one thing having a good product, but that doesn't mean that you've got a good business. That's a whole new world. That's what I've been learning. And, you know, as an art teacher before, so I knew nothing about <laughs> most of the things I have to do each day. And it's such <laughs> a huge learning curve. Um, but it is exciting and hopefully we'll all be worth it in the end. <laughs> oh, no. So how how do you manage the work life balance? I know you've got, you know, your kids a little bit older now as well. Doesn't get easier, does mm. it? Ooh, does it? <laughs> oh it does, it does, it really does. I mean it does. But I think that's such a I think me and Dan and I, you know, it's taken us it's we're still working on it. You know, it, we've recently got into a really good rhythm of like who does what and the whole thing isn't there where um you sort of need more support from your partner um but mm-hmm. say like no but don't do it like that, do it like this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sort of I'm the queen of that. <laughs> I sort of learned that I had to stop doing that and so like he's always he's really good at cooking actually Dan's great at cooking so he's always done that but he was just cooking I was trying to plan the meals I was buying the food and so I just said I I need you to do all of it you know I I just I can't I haven't got space for I can't think what we could eat whereas he's really good at that so I think sort of Mm figuring out and it's taken you know we've been married just over 10 years now and we're still working on that figuring out how and and I feel like we've just turned a corner where we work we're working together really well and part of it is me stepping back and let him have he has full you know he like I say he sort of decides what we're having he buys the food he cooks the food he cleans up and so that's his area that he feels like he's got full ownership of um shout out to Dan yeah we're coming over for dinner (laughs) Can you write me a meal plan, please? (laughs) (laughs) He's also really good at like making use of what's in the fridge. I mean, I can't. I just look and I think there's nothing. We've got nothing. And he's like, he can make things out of nothing. But it hasn't always been like that. You know, it has been very much. I think it's certainly when you have a baby, you become, it's just almost, it it just happens that way. Your children want you a lot. You are Mm. just doing Mm. a lot of the jobs just because you have, you know, if you're breastfeeding, you're feeding them for a long time. So a lot of the jobs fall on your shoulders. And as the children get a little bit older, you really sort of have to work out how people can help you out. And that is sort of like, like it's a control thing, isn't it? So I have to let go of, of certain jobs. <laughs> oh, we hear um, you on that one. We're the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, how he stacks the dishwasher. Oh, but... <laughs> oh see, actually, things. the dishwasher is Matt's domain. I'm actually not allowed anywhere near it. He's the one that stands yeah. there, watches me do it, and just goes, "How? How can you be so illogical when it comes to something like this?" And just rearrange and just it, all. So it like, in, oh. trying to get as long as you can shut <laughs> the door. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what I'm like. I can't think of it. Um, but that's incredible. So, in terms of balance, then, do you think from going from your career to your business, you 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 have more control over work life balance? Do you think for you and your family now? Yeah, I, I mean, I offer sort of recent, obviously both my children now are in school and they have so many like days where we where we have to go in. There's no way I would have been able to do that if I was teaching. So I mm. feel like I am very privileged to be able to be flexible with my time. Is, do I have a work-life balance? That's a good question because I work late every night. You know, mm-hmm. I, there's very, there's one night where Dan and I both say that we're not going to I, I'm not going to work and we'll be together and I and but pretty much every other night I am working so I'd, I like to think that I'd like to think that that's temporary mm-hmm. and like I said I, I I love doing what I'm doing so I feel like that it's worth it but then I can I can pick the girl, girls up from school I can take them to school I can be there for them as well so yes it feels like I'm getting certainly now starting to get a better balance um but I think you always feel like you're not doing something well enough no matter what the makeup Mm. is of your family no matter what your work you're doing you always feel like you're we're we're always spinning too many plates and I think you always Mm. feel like you can't do everything well enough and that's a really difficult uh, I think that's something you have to sort of work with that sort of feeling of, of, of not doing something well enough that's okay you know because we can't yeah. because it's too much so I think you know people talk about the um 
the invisible to-do list that I think a lot of like Dan Danny's great with that he doesn't think about any school parties or getting any presents or the school trips or the notes or the there is a, um, a quite a lot of jobs that you know there's no dad's whatsapp group it's the mum's whatsapp group there's point. not many <laughs> yeah that is such a good yeah. point <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's it's right it's Dan you've been demoted things. now I'm not impressed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, is he going to listen to this? (laughs) No, he's too busy cooking, Jenna. Yes. (laughs) He's certainly not replying to the WhatsApp messages, that's for sure. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's hard. But I think because of, you know, what we've experienced of children and what our our, our mums and dads did, it it was was sort of clearer. The lines were clearer, weren't they? So we're sort of still Mm. feeling, that's what we knew to be what happened. So we still have that while still trying trying to manage a career so that it's so much pressure on women and it is just too much so there has to be this shift but I just think that's taking its time mm-hmm. yeah yes yeah. I always thought I have I had this uh, kind of perception that as the kids get older I was thinking to myself my work-life balance will definitely get better because once they're older they're not as reliant in in, in the way that a baby and a newborn is and then I have this sudden feeling of like anxiety thinking oh my god actually no as they get older they're gonna go to 30 different birthday parties every weekend like they've got multiple (laughs) things going on at school or like five million hobbies and clubs that they go to like how would I fit that in and then I have this worry about summer holiday I have literally reached out to so many friends recently I mean Mila is literally just turned one and I am already panicking of what I'm going to be doing in the summer holidays. I'm like, what What do you do with them? I said, I can't take six weeks off, you know, off work. And that's a work-life yeah. balance as well when, you know, you're trying to give 100% at work, trying to give 100%, you know, at, in, to your family life and to, you know, to your husband, to, to your kids. I, I'm I'm worrying about that stuff now because I know what I'm like. I just, I'm not, I'm literally, I'm not an in-between person and that's... I don't know. How do you how do you do it? What am I, what am I going to do in the summer holidays, guys? <laughs> well, don't ask me. I'll have I'll have Mila, mate. That's the Just question. Pack her off to me. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it does. So it does get easier, you know. Because I was thinking about this the other day. So, like, you go when you've got. Sorry, is, is it Mila? He's how old? Sorry, yes. one. Did you say? Just to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just don't sit still. Yeah, mm. like now when I meet my friends with our kids. I can sit and chat to them and they will just go off and play and I haven't got to follow them around the park and it is so much easier. It does get easier, but there are other things, you know, there are other things as they get older that it it definitely moves from from being more physically draining to more mentally draining. So like I worry Mm. about things to do, like their social, like how they have their social interactions. There's still a lot of things going on. Like I have two girls and they think about things a lot and worry about things a lot and anxiety Mm. you know so there are lots of things um that are difficult but it's a lot easier in terms of you do get more time to yourself I'm not waking up in the night anymore you know I mean that's huge isn't it when you're not sleeping through the night that's that's such a difficult time yeah it just adds that extra extra layer doesn't it but how do you manage so let's take some holidays and how do you manage that running your own business so my, so because, so Dan is, a, um, he's a hairstylist. Uh, so he has Monday off anyway. So I'll work on Monday. Um, he then takes a second day off because, because he works Saturday. So he'll take Monday and Tuesday off. And then my mum will have them for one day. So then I will only work. See, I'm really worried about this, this year, actually, because like mm-hmm. I say, the business has changed now and, it's I always have to reply to emails I have to fulfill orders so if I it does get busy I think there's going to be a lot of sort of videos of the kids around me whilst I'm trying to fulfill orders there's going to be a bit of that but um (laughs) like they're older so they will go off and play together and um you know entertain themselves more easily than what they did before but I will work three three days a week instead of five and then again I'll be doing things in the evening which is probably more like fulfilling orders instead of other jobs that I do now so I just have to switch around the way that my days run um and yeah. just I have to say to myself okay so I have to I sort of build up to the holidays I have to plan for it so that over the holidays I know that I'm just keeping the business going for that five weeks whilst you know we're going on holiday for a week so and I'm really lucky that um you know 
as I was a teacher, I live in the same area where I used to teach. And I've had two girls now who used to go to the school that I taught, who are now my interns. So they've gone off to university. Oh, wow. One got oh, a, a degree in business. Yeah. And she came and then she did an internship with me. She's now she's gone off and got a great job where she travels around the world and things which she felt she couldn't get without doing an internship. Um, and then Amazing. I've now got another girl who used to go to the school where I used to teach, who is doing an intern with me now. So they will help me. Um, a little bit through the holidays as well oh that's amazing and I just want to touch on what you said about um sort of the video there's a hilarious video on your um on your Instagram of your daughter you in the office trying to work and fulfill orders and I think she's playing the recorder (laughs) and that we all know what the recorder sounds like even if you're the best recorder player in the world and it is hilarious oh my god just the look you give to the camera it's like oh my god (laughs) And I just feel so, I guess that's one of the behind the scenes of running your own business. In the yeah, that, that, I was trying to do like this well. video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do this video of be like packing up orders and sort of just, you know, like it's all, you know, the balance, it's all working. And then just, <laughs> she just wanted to put this recorder down. And I just thought, I just kept trying to do another take on the camera, but she just wouldn't, she, I just said, can you just stop playing just for a minute? But she, yeah, there was just no way she was leaving that recorder alone. So I hid that recorder well <laughs> and I'm hiding it now before the next summer holiday <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can come out again on the 1st of September yeah, that's yeah. A, or maybe that's on the a... days when Dan's looking after them actually <laughs> oh yeah the Monday Tuesday that's a good idea <laughs> yeah. that's another thing though I was going to say about running your own business in like summer holidays or generally throughout the year do you ever switch off and have time off because it, I find I mean I've got my own business as well and I find it really hard mm. Even when you're meant to have a little bit of a break, you still find yourself replying to emails or checking things or somebody messages or contacts you. It, it, you know, do you ever get that break in for yourself as well? Yeah, it's really hard. I do find it really hard. I have to put my phone away. I can't, if my phone's near me, I, I just I have to sort of hide my phone. So I did last year, I just, but the only way I can do it is by moving my phone away. And then I will, I mean, you, you have to, don't you? I still sort of check mm. in in the evening just in case there's anything urgent. Um, but I think that's always going to be, you know, there's pros and cons, isn't there? If I was teaching, I would be able to have, well, would I? I would still be planning lessons. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think with it being my own business, it feels like all the responsibilities on me. So Mm-hmm. I, yeah I think that's just one of the one of the things that comes with running your own business certainly at the stage that I'm at at the moment I'd like to think in the future that will be easier um and like I say I've got people who help me a little bit so that is getting easier now yeah yeah so we've mentioned um a couple of your products the teethers so let's talk all things cloud and cuckoo so talk us through your products <laughs> talk about you know what makes them so incredible um and yeah what else you you have to offer with products and things like that in case anybody doesn't know yeah so um the the fact that they're made from natural rubber is in my opinion what makes them really different so there is other natural rubber teething toys that are maybe not as easy to hold but what's quite different about my friend goo is um my friend's goo goo's tail which can be used as like an alternative to a dummy so unlike a dummy that sort of sits in the mouth and they um forget it's there and so they become sort of um, used to having it that doesn't really happen they'll sort of move it around they'll move it to different areas of their mouth and then they'll forget about it when they're distracted um so it gives them the comfort of a dummy um without them sort of becoming used to it and being something that and then you have to take away at a later date i've had quite a few parents who are trying to transition away from a dummy so you can use this with a dummy as well um and but it's great for them saying okay so taking the dummies away but they've still got something you know it's instead of Mm. going you know, cold turkey and not having any dummy at all, it gives them something um, that's very similar. So um, the benefit then as well of that is that they're moving it around and it's developing those fine motor skills. It also develops all the muscles in their mouth. So with a dummy, they have to use a static bite to keep it in. Um, mm-hmm. And so that just means they're not using the other muscles of their mouth. And, th- and that's fine. So if you take a baby's dummy out and let them mouth toys, that's great because it's great for their development. Um, but with this, it, it develops the muscles even more because they're purposely, you know, chewing it on different parts of their mouth. So it, it's um, my friend who is quite different in that way. And then we've got my friend Hoot, which we developed just mm-hmm. for even younger babies. So both hands can hold it. I and mean, it's a little bit lighter as well. So for some babies, they do. I think, did you say your um, daughter had four... T- quite early four months five months old 
Yeah, so George had his first tooth at four months. Isla had oh, her George. first two at five months. But yeah, she currently that's at early. seven months has her top four coming in. Um, Oof, yeah, so, that's, yeah, that's early. My, my, both really of fun. mine didn't get theirs till... Yeah. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it, when there's... <laughs> especially four in one go. Mine didn't get theirs till they were one. So it really, really? varies mm. from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've heard of this, but there are babies that are born with teeth. <laughs> Oh my yeah, goodness. I have heard that, and I'm like jealous that they don't have to go through the teeth. I've seen it. Yeah. No, I've I've, I've actually yeah. seen it, guys, and it's it's quite. Have you seen it? It's quite it's quite scary, actually. Our friend, our friend's baby was born with like eight teeth. Eight? <laughs> no, I, no I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny, but it's just very shocking. No, it's very it shocking is. to see. Yeah, wow. it was, uh, and, they're, they're, and then got they're nothing, babies. nothing for ages. Nothing for ages. Wow. I think it was. I yeah. think it was about ten months. Then more started coming through. But yeah, wow. that was interesting. That was. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, and it's just they vary so much, you know. So the fact that they can have them that early, or they can be one, and yeah, I think you spend a lot of time going. Oh, I think they must be teething because they're a bit grumpy and they're struggling. Mm. You know, you're always <laughs> sort of thinking, are they teething? They've got rosy oh, cheeks, God, you know. Yeah. And so, of course, it's a teething toy, but it's also more about the fact that. It's, the babies will mouth toys regardless as to whether they're teething it's how they're learning they're exploring through sensory play so I know my, both of mine loved my car keys and my phone and the remote control and all sorts of things that they shouldn't be putting in their mouth but they're gonna that's how they're sort of learning about the world um, and when I initially sort of found that most toys are made from plastic I started to do research and obviously to develop the toys I was researching into a lot of people wanted me to make the toy from silicon but I was really insistent I knew it had to be rubber because I wanted it to be soft wanted it to be squishy squishy and then there was some a research paper that came out that was um 59 teething toys they tested were labeled as BPA free all found to contain BPA um wow. and so one of the problems all of them yeah so that all of them. Wow. And I think that's that's hard for me because I go to lengths to make sure that our teething toys don't contain any of, any of those things. And obviously still my labelling. But when people do that, I think they tested quite a few from Amazon as well that were not not safe. Um, and so I think it's, you know, I care so much about our products. Like I say, I go to lengths. But one of the really worrying bits of research that, you know, I've had lots of times where I felt like giving up. Um, but there was research that found far higher concentrations of microplastics in babies compared to adults. I think it's like 20 times. Um, wow. And they're obviously wow. so much smaller. So that's a huge concern. Um, mm. And so what well, the way that they found that out was through testing babies poo. And <laughs> who would want that job? Oh, nice job. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and obviously that's the bits that they're passing through we talk about plastics a lot don't we and microplastics and we've seen it on the beach that washes up and inside animals but it breaks up into further and further small, smaller particles that we can either breathe in or they might ingest if they're chewing on a plastic toy or one of the the main things to avoid is if um with a feeding bottle if you put milk either um express milk or formula milk in a bottle and then heat it up that does break down the plastic and then there's lots of microplastics in that milk um wow. so i feel i mean i called my local mp because i felt like this should be a, a public health and safety you know don't use a plastic feeding bottle um there, there's various other ways that why they think that babies have higher concentrations of microplastics all our carpets are synthetic so there's tiny fibers that will come away from all lots of polyester toys they all have tiny fibers that we breathe in or that the babies breathe in and so they found tiny wow. um microplastics in babies lungs so it's really hard oh, to avoid um yeah but certainly if they're mouthing try to go for natural toys whether that's uh, natural rubber or wooden toys or um certainly when they're mouthing toys a lot um but also when you put them on if you're putting them on the floor to play try to use more uh, get a play mat that's made from an organic cotton or something that isn't polyester um and then the, and then the bit the milk the bottle one as well is a big one um but i just feel really passionate about about that and that like i say i've called my local mp but what we need is alternatives you know how mm, can we expect mm. people babies are gonna babies need toys they're gonna chew toys we have to provide alternatives so we've got a few products that are in development that are more soft toy based um and like, like i said i've got lots of ideas <laughs> well, too many ideas probably <laughs> um, but for other toys um yeah just to try to give alternatives so that people can choose which toy they they buy and hopefully choose for a natural one Gosh, I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't amazing. know about the microplastics, and it's, 
you know, when I come to think of it, you know, when, you know, even kids, adults have lots of gut issues and, you know, yeah. whether this, this could be an underlying issue of, of or cause of, of all mm. those issues. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. It's, there is. Uh, and and it, 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 the more you research into it, say like, for example, I've not drank water, water in a bottle, plastic bottle. I just would not buy anymore. You know, yeah, I used yeah. to buy a bottle of water all the time, but there's quite a few things like that, which are big things to avoid. But the, yes, obviously it's the plastic, but it's the chemicals in the plastic. So it is really complicated. It's really complex in terms of um, and I mean, and again, you know, part of the reason why I'm so passionate about this is the plastic and chemical industries are trying to triple production by 2050. So we've got wow. all the plastics in our environment are still there. They're not going anywhere. They're just breaking up into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, mm. If they triple production, that leads to only one thing, which is more microplastics in our environment, more microplastics in our bodies. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. That is, yeah, that is crazy. So, so you've got your teethers. And what other products can people <laughs> enjoy from Cloud & Cuckoo? So we do the super absorbent dribble bibs. <clears throat> um, obviously, when they're teething, they'll be quite dribbly. And so it helps to prevent rashes. Um, and then we've also just recently done the matching leggings. Um, and those were being manufactured in the UK. But unfortunately, it's really hard to get things manufactured in the, K in the UK. So what we have now of that, we're just about to do some new products, some new bibs. Um, so what we have on the website at the moment, that is the last of those, the leggings and the bibs, um, before we launch some new products. But then we do the gift sets as well. So we have a lot of people who have bought the toys for their own babies and then want to buy for friends. So we do like nice little gift sets. Um, I think like you said, somebody bought for George. Is that right? Yeah, it was amazing. And to be honest, yeah. I remember opening it and I thought I had teeth and I just thought, at the time, and quite naively, I just thought, what an odd present. Like, you know, it's your first child, you don't really think. I yeah. just thought, it, I mean, it was boxed beautifully, by the way, and packaged gorgeously. <laughs> but I just thought, what, what a bizarre present. And then, obviously, because it was so early, I remember he was dribbly, he had the rosy cheeks, grumpy. And I and I think it was my mother-in-law was like, oh, he's teething. And I was like, oh, shut up. No, he's not. Like, they don't teethe before six months. It's like, no, 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 he's yeah. not. And then I gave him one of the teeth and yeah, was like demolishing it, like chewing it, holding it. I was like, oh my God. And then I saw his tooth. I was like, he is teeth. I was like, oh, what a great present these teeth are. <laughs> um, because I just quite naively didn't really, didn't really, yeah, think, think of them. But there are, yeah, if you're not sure what to get somebody who's got a new baby, because it's like that as well, isn't it? It's like, oh, do you get clothes? Well, they'll have loads mm. of clothes. They'll have all the, you know, the bottles. They'll have all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, great gift idea. Definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the, what the, I, like I think I said before, but the, the idea is that they entertain, settle and soothe. And so although it's a, a present for the baby, it's also the idea behind it is that it's a present also for the parents because it just gives them five minutes to, you know, if they, if their baby's sort of entertained or settle and soothing them, that means that they can get on with something else or sit down and have a hot cup of tea. So. Yeah. And the clip is also a brilliant addition. Mm -hmm um to the gift set as well so i put the clip on the pram so you don't have mm. the dropping and then be like oh God, great now i can't use that for, until i get home and wash it um so yeah the clip was also brilliant <laughs> so yeah or the constant picking that. up off the floor i mean we oh. were with flow that I'd, I'd got i'd got the toy by then and she would sort of she'd chew on it and then she'd drop it because she's just learning to hold so she'd drop it cry pick it up drop it cry and so with the clip i mean a lot of people said I sort of noticed that a lot of people were buying them and then buying them again because I think they took them out and about and then lost them and then buy and so people were like, Oh, don't don't solve that problem if they're buying more. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's better not to lose it in the first place. So um yeah, the clip just does solve a lot of problems. <laughs> Make life a bit yeah. easier. Definitely. Amazing. So do you have any tips for maybe a new mum, a new parent wanting to start their own business? Yeah. Uh, so if I think, I think you have to be, certainly it would be, um, you've got to, you've got to be prepared to put a lot of time and effort into it and, and to be okay with it, with you doing a lot of it in your own time. You know, I, I think that's mm -hmm. just part of it. And I like, and I like doing that. And I, I think if I'd felt like, I didn't want to do that. I would have given it up a while ago. So to be able to do that, you have to have people around you who are willing to work with you, a partner that's quite supportive and also to just sort of accept that you can't do everything and be everything to all people. You know, you have mm -hmm. to um, really make an effort 
to be kind to yourself because I think quite easily you can feel like you're doing everything badly um, or not enough, you're not doing anything enough. Um, so it would certainly be to um, make sure that you've got a good supportive network. And I think in terms of starting a business, I think, yeah, certainly if it's a product business, um, there are ways that you can try it out before you go all in. Um, and so just to make, you know, I always felt like I wanted a shop to sell them in. Actually, I probably don't want to be running a shop. You know, I, I, that's not actually what I want to do. I, I think probably I, I like designing toys. Do you know what I mean? So I think you have to be really clear on what it is you want to be doing every day so that you can mm -hmm. build your business around the jobs that you like doing you know I'm sort of getting to a point where I can pay other people to do certain jobs that I'm not very good at but you do have to do all the jobs first before you can before you get to a position where you can do that I don't know if I there, that really was any tips advice. in there but yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was because yeah I mean like I mean just the thing that you said about the shop because I think some people have that sort of idealization don't they of, oh, I'd love to have a little shop with all my own stuff in and it's like would you do you mm. actually want that because actually to get to that point I mean, yeah. there's a huge amount a of steps you have, to, you have to go yeah, through. Yeah, every Saturday to you're going to gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, they're really good tips. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. Yes, we have loved talking you. to you. And I've loved talking really, to really you. really, really great advice. Um, yeah, no, so where can pleasure. people buy your products? Where can people contact you? Where, where do people go? Yeah, so you, um, on the website, so that's cloudandcuckoo.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram mainly would be my social platform of choice. Um, you can also uh, sort of say this because I know for parents um, it's sometimes easier, but you can, we also are on Amazon. So you can buy just the teething toys, not the clip, not the gift sets, not the um, leggings and bibs, uh, but also on Amazon. So, but yeah, I mean, I love, I love engaging with our community. So please message me on Instagram. I love the chats, that sort of thing yeah oh, thank you this has been brilliant i've loved it my first podcast i love it oh, yeah. yay <laughs> welcome back episode from illness to kelly oh yes so we, yeah. i'm so glad you came on i'm trying to hold my coffin again <laughs> you've done very well <laughs> but thank you so much for giving up your time we know how precious it is so we really really appreciate it and um hopefully we'll speak to you again soon thanks jenna thank you